so I was a Bernie Sanders delegate in 2016, and then I was a Joe Biden delegate in 2020. However, due to COVID, they had the virtual national convention. So even though I was a delegate of the floor convention stuff, didn't debate over platform, no balloons fell from the ceiling uh, when I watched it at home. So I've been to previous conventions, but this is my first convention where uh, I am a DNC member. I know quite a few of the leaders of the state parties. I've worked with um, to get funding uh, for Utah, partnering with other states. So it, it, I, I am very excited to, to mingle and, and meet uh, some new friends, but also uh, some of those that I've built good relationships with. I was talking to the, the chair of Kentucky. Uh, both of our wives work in education and they, uh, they got to know each other at the White House Christmas party and they became best friends, so. Oh, okay. Now you're kind of a, a veteran almost? Uh, yeah, I mean, as, as much of a veteran as you can be at 30. <laughs> so uh, technically the nominating uh, of Kamala Harris happened virtually but, uh, earlier this month. And the reason why was because there were some states that the, parties had to have their nominee uh, before our national convention date. So Ohio was a big one that we had to hold the official nominating process early enough for uh, Kamala Harris and Tim Walz to be on the ballot uh, in some of those uh, red states. So, uh, you know, we're still going to do the typical, the great state of Utah casts uh, 34 votes. We'll still do that, It'll, but it will technically be more ceremonial than it will be uh, the actual process. Kamala Harris is the nominee, uh, but the great thing about the convention is it's also a uh, opportunity for parties and for the nominees to really identify themselves and introduce themselves and their platforms to the voters. And so I really think that's what we're gonna see at this convention. Um, since we've done kind of the more boring work of the official nominating process, we're going to hear from President Biden, who I'm sure will um, get a standing ovation at the convention and really be able to talk about the accomplishments that him and the Vice President have made in the last four years. We'll hear from, uh, I'm sure, the Obamas and the Clintons, uh, the leaders in the House and Senate uh, to talk about what they've done in Congress. And then we'll obviously, I think, get to know a little bit more about Tim Walls. I think he was someone who um, most folks wouldn't have been able to pick out before, uh, especially Democrats. And now he's kind of become a, a, a household name. And, and then we'll also hear uh, from the Vice President and hear her give her nominating speech. In, in this process, I mean, 2024 is a very unique uh, situation. I mean, we haven't had um, a, a president who, uh, who is going for the nomination still come and speak. Um, I was going to say until 68, but I don't think President Johnson even went to the convention to speak to the delegates. Uh -huh. um, and in 1980, you had Jimmy Carter and Ted Kennedy, but by that time, Jimmy Carter had already secured the nomination from Ted Kennedy. So this is truly a, a very unique experience. And, and, and I think people are, are noticing that. And I think yeah, I'm, I'm a big Biden supporter. I, I was a strong supporter of the, the president, but I think this was a great opportunity for us to show as a party and as an administration that when we talk about democracies on the line, that this is the most important election of our lifetime. It's not just, uh, it's not just words, it's not just um, us trying to get a good soundbite. You know, the President of the United States, you know, one could argue the most powerful individual in the world stepped aside and put his ego and pride in what's best for the country. And I think that's something that is going to be spotlighted. Our state party leader, Diane Lewis, the, the, the chair of the party, will be the one um, uh, speaking for the state and Unless she gets a cold, I guess I'll step up, but yeah, I, understand. yes, yeah, <laughs> but I, I'm sure that she's going to do a great job at that, uh, but I'll probably be standing next to it. I'll give you a little nod, yeah, nice. uh, so you and your viewers know that's, that's directed to you guys. That's a good idea. We need like a one-off game set. Yes. Yeah.
Um, so we have 40 delegates, but that includes four of our super delegates that are technically uh, myself, uh, Diane Lewis, and our national committee man and committee woman. Um, so we were automatic delegates. Um, so we had 36 people that ran to be national delegates. And so in Weber County, I believe there's only one, Josh Hogan is the only one from Weber County. Uh, the other one up north is Shannon Rhodes, who's the chair of Cache County. Uh, I don't know, do you have any thoughts about people uh, calling it a coup? Uh, you know, I, I think we saw what a coup was on, or an attempted coup on January 6th. I, I think this was, again, a, a, a difficult decision made by the president. I think there were some members in the party that obviously tried to nudge him in one direction, but I, I think the president had to be the one to make that decision. He technically had the delegates to get the nomination. No one could stop him from getting the nomination. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I am very appreciative to the president and I think it takes a very big man to step aside and do what's best for his party and for the country. And I don't think you'd see that coming from the other side. Shortly after uh, President Biden sent his letter, I think it was on a Sunday, uh, we had a call with our delegation on Monday uh, to discuss whether or not we wanted to, as a delegation, endorse the vice president. Um, and I want to respect uh, the privacy of those individuals, but I can tell you, I mean, there were tears. I, I mean, there were folks saying that this is like losing a family member. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was a very emotional uh, conversation, but again, I applaud our delegates for having that conversation, regardless of where they fell on that discussion. I think it was really important to have an honest and, and blunt conversation. We did end up at the end of the call voting to unanimously uh, support the vice president. You know, I can tell your viewers to uh, keep an eye out for Alabama. There's been some real, uh, basically they have their slate of national delegates. Their chair is claiming that there's a different slate of delegates that should be uh, I, that should be identified. Alternate delegates on the Democratic side. Yes, be doing that. that has been the biggest ruffle right now with the DNC. Mm -hmm. I'm a part of two groups: the DNC that everyone knows, that's the National Party, but then the ASDC is another group that I'm a part of, and that's the Association of State Democratic Committees. So all the chairs, vice chairs, um, are a part of that group. The, the DNC is we approve their budget, we meet uh, twice a year, we uh, make any appointments we need on committees, and you know, not to crush people's dreams or anything like, we, we are basically told right out of the gate, this is the agenda and all the work that needed to be done, all the tw arm twisting happened way before they even put that on the agenda. We're all there. Everyone who would have fought it has already had their fights in the back rooms, and it's not too eventful. Um, the ASDC is really where I think we have some real opportunities to grow. It, and it's a place where we get to work with other state party leaders. I've gotten to know, for example, the, uh, the Kentucky chair, who due to my relationship with him at the ASDC, uh, I was able to bring him to be the keynote speaker at the Weber uh, Democrats fundraiser. You know, I think what's really important, I was talking to someone and they said, we felt this confidence in 2016. What's the difference between 2016 and now? And I think what we have is, I think we have the confidence that maybe we didn't have even two months ago, especially after the debate. But what we also have is energy. And this is energy that I don't think we had with Hillary Clinton. Um, uh, I think there was energy to maybe stop Donald Trump, but with Vice President Harris, with Governor Walz, there's energy to see them in office and see what they're able to, what they're gonna be able to do in their first 100 days, in their first four years. And so I think that's a, a great combination that again, we didn't have. It's always easy to cast stones at the party and talk about how your, your candidate wasn't the one that uh, got the nod, but at the end of the day, that takes a lot more energy to throw stones than to be a part of a team. We're gonna have a watch party, I think in Weber County and Davis County. I hope folks that want to attend uh, look for those opportunities. You know, show up to our state party office. We have signs that you can pick up. 
there's so many important races. Uh, I know we're talking national convention, but we have really important races. We've got uh, State Representative Rosemary Lesser, who's probably the most, uh, that's probably the most competitive district we're gonna have in the state. I think Angela Chilberica, Stacy Bernal have real opportunities to get pickups in the state legislature. Steve Van Wagner is running a strong campaign um, for county commission. And I, I mentioned this before that we're seeing this at the state party. We have our staff open up our doors around 10 in the morning. There's a line waiting. Uh, by the time they get there. People that want to volunteer, people that want to donate, people that want a yard sign. So show up, whether it's sending out texts, uh, uh, putting yard signs up, making phone calls, door knocking, we need you. And um, Utah has been a unique state where it has been, I think both in 2016 and 2020, uh, the lowest percentage Donald Trump has gotten in a state that he won. And I think that's really important. So if we want to build off of the momentum and energy that we're going to have after the convention and win uh, not just at the top of the ticket but down ballot, I think it's uh, important to get involved and there's some really great opportunities here in Weber County and the surrounding areas.